Have you ever heard of a moment of dreams? Oh, that sounds like some kind of sweet drink. <laughs> I'm afraid not. It's the name of an event we started to hold regularly. Dreams have become quite the hot topic in Sumeru, and many people are excited to share the dreams they've seen at night. The same goes for me. The last time I dreamed was when I was but a little child, so I can't help but feel excited and nostalgic about dreaming again. Oh, right. Everyone's able to dream again now. <laughs> I'm afraid not. It's the name of an event we started to hold regularly. Dreams have become quite the hot topic in Sumeru, and many people are excited to share the dreams they've seen at night. The same goes for me. The last time I dreamed was when I was but a little child, so I can't help but feel excited and nostalgic about dreaming again. Oh, right. Everyone's able to dream again now. Yes, we organized an event to give everyone with new dreams a platform to freely share their experiences. And thus our event, A Moment of Dreams, was born. So, it's kind of like a fireside chat. You could say that. We hear all sorts of wild and fabulous stories every day. Really, why not have a listen for yourselves? Yeah, but... To us, dreaming is as normal as breathing. Wait, but if there are free drinks and snacks involved, then Paima might consider it. Oh, really? So you mean, you've already seen many dreams? Mm-hmm. But no need to get so excited. It's really nothing special. No, no, no. We need experienced participants like you to share your experiences with dreaming. Please allow me to address you two as dream experts. Oh, expert? <laughs> Paimon kind of likes it. Now you seem interested. <laughs> Please, follow me to the meeting place. It won't take much of your time. Rest assured, you'll find all the drinks and snacks you'd like there. Wow, how accommodating. <laughs> Sign us up. Uh but wait, uh, Paimon's getting ahead of herself again. We should see what the traveler thinks first. Uh, why aren't you saying anything? <laughs> All right, hurry up and take us to be dream experts. <laughs> Very good. Follow me then. Important part of being an expert? <clears throat> well, I suppose it must be accumulating knowledge and sharing your experiences? Nope! It's all about the title! From now on, Paimon will be known as Paimon, the Dream Expert! Oh, okay. Sorry to interrupt, everyone. We finally have some real dream experts joining us. Esteemed experts, this way, please. Ahem. Now, if anyone has any questions, please feel free to ask them. They must be dream experts from another land. Great! Oh, I have a question. Me first! Me first! No rush! Everyone, please line up and ask in an orderly fashion! Whoa, Paimon didn't expect them to be so enthusiastic. My question is simple. My everyday life is very difficult, so I would like to become a slime in my dreams. How can I do that? Oh, Paimon knows! Paimon's had this kind of dream before, so <laughs> she knows a thing or two. The first time, Paimon became an animal slime. Paimon was shot by an adventurer's arrow and flew in the sky all night long. The second time, Paimon became a dendro slime. A group of kids thought Paimon was a radish and pulled out all the grass on her head. Oh, it was super painful. The third time, Paimon became a cryo slime. In the end, Paimon was captured by a chef and turned into a and the fourth time, Paimon...
Pokemon became a powerful Geoslime and went to take revenge on the forest boar that used to bully Paimon. But then the boar showed up with all of its relatives and Paimon lost again. <laughs> Wait, why did all of your dreams end so tragically? Because slimes are monsters, even though they look cute, they usually cause trouble and end up getting killed by adventurers. Things don't tend to end well for monsters. Believe Paimon. I suppose you're right. They are monsters, after all. I just want to experience a different life, but it seems that becoming a monster would be even worse than my current life. Hmm. Maybe I'd be happier if I became just a regular finch. Or fish. Looks like being an expert is way easier than Paimon imagined. Next! Oh! It's my turn! Esteemed expert, I want to know what posture I should sleep in so I can have the same dream as the one I had last night. Uh, well? Hey, you're supposed to be helping. Um, first, why don't you tell Paimon about the dream you want to have again? <laughs> oh, it's quite ordinary. I sat and chatted with my wife on a sunny day, listening to the breeze blowing through the valley. Why don't you just find your wife and talk with her? There's no need to wait for a dream. Well, uh, unfortunately, she passed away. Oh! Uh, sorry. Paimon shouldn't have assumed anything. No, it's fine. I didn't make that clear. I just want a chance to see her again. Yeah, it's not really about posture. What you think about right before falling asleep is probably way more important. Oh, is that all I have to do? Think about it. If you're the one thinking about her, and you're the one that'll be dreaming about her, then it'll be easier to connect your thoughts and dreams. You do have a point. I'll give it a try tonight. Thanks for your wise advice. Oh, my turn, my turn. Hum, I want to know the name of the plant in my dream. I want to bring the souvenir box to my room into my dream. I dreamt of a raven flying over the wasteland last night. Does that have any kind of special meaning? Hey, no rush! One at a time! <sighs> Their questions were way too difficult. We don't actually know anything more than they do. We're just more experienced dreamers, that's all. You do have a point. It's more rewarding to explore and contemplate the meaning of a question than to focus on the answer itself. Right now, these people are like... Wanderers who've starved for three days and three nights and are desperate to replenish their energy. Any explanation they get now is like pure sustenance to them, no matter how good the explanation really is. Oh, and now that Paimon has said that, you know who comes to mind? Bingo! If she was here, she'd probably be making some similar analogy. Unfortunately, she's super busy right now, and may not have time for gatherings like this. Dear experts, we have another guest who would like to consult you. Uh, but you saw how we answered all the questions just now. We're not really all that knowledgeable. Ah, but this guest is rather... special. My question is, why didn't you immediately tell me about such an interesting place? Huh? Nahida? How did you get here? Interesting events like a moment of dreams don't happen every day after all. No matter how busy things are, I'd still set aside some time to check it out. Anyway, I really didn't expect to meet you here. Right! If there's anyone that understands dreams, it's you! You should be able to help us answer all these questions! 
You're not wrong. All right, they can ask me anything. The more interesting, the better. have all vanished in an instant. It appears I'm the one spoiling the fun here. I'll see myself out. Oh, that's not true, Nahida. I don't want to get in the way of the original purpose of a moment of dreams, which is to let people gather here and freely share their marvelous dreams. Now the atmosphere here is like water poured into a container. The water is more secure and settled, but it has lost its free-flowing nature from the river. I just want it to be another drop in the water, not the cold and restrictive container. She's sulking. Um, hey! It's alright, everyone! No need to be shy! The Dendro Archon is really nice, so please just... Go ahead and ask. Otherwise, she'll leave. Uh, all right. I'll give it a try. Oh, it's the slime guy. Hey, drop the nicknames, would you? Besides, I don't want to become a slime anymore. Maybe a finch or fish is more suitable for me. I see. So you want to become a small animal in your dreams, right? Why do you think that sounds good to you? I guess I just want to experience something different. My everyday life is nothing but the same. The sky is right above me, and the ocean just over the horizon, yet I remain caged in a life of monotony. So you want to experience something new in your dreams? Mm, sorry, I'm getting a little confused. Why don't you seek out some new experiences in real life? Because if I don't work, I won't have any mora. Sure, I don't want to be out hammering nails and cutting wood every day, but I have aging parents and young children to take care of. By the time this all dawned on me, I realized that my life has already been filled to the brim by trifling matters, and I have no more freedom. But if that's the case, then even if you became a flying bird or swimming fish, you will still be hammering nails and cutting wood in your dreams. The reason is you've already been caged. It doesn't matter what your physical body turns into. Your mind will still be stuck in the same predicament. Really? That sounds pretty terrible. Then what should I do? I don't know everything that you're going through. But, how about replacing your hammer? Huh? Replacing my hammer? That's right. Having worked for such a long time, you of all people must know what makes a good hammer. Well, of course. A good hammer needs to be heavy enough to drive the nail in with just a couple taps. And the handle has to have a good grip to it, not too smooth. Come to think of it, I haven't replaced my current hammer in quite some time. You should replace it. Then decorate the handle with something you like. Maybe some ornaments, fur, or hard leather wrapping. Then write the names of your children on it. <sighs> that makes sense. I think it'd give me a good boost of energy at work. A new sense of adventure often begins with the little things in life. You'll need to become a bird in the air or a fish in the sea. You only need to do your best in life, and all those things you cherish will become your source of happiness. Yes. Yes, I get it now. This is a real eye-opener for me. I'll go and pick out a new hammer right away. No, I should make one of my own. Thank you, Great Dendro Archon. Know how to 
take it right to the heart of the problem. Actually, I didn't really understand the problem. Huh? I gave him that advice because I once saw a worker doing the same thing. Whenever he became tired, he would look at some names on the handle of his tool. After a moment, he'd start to smile. It really surprised me at the time. My guess is that the names on the handle were of important people to him. Mm -hmm. After observation, I know this kind of behavior motivates people. But why is that? Is it because of excitement, anticipation, or helplessness? I really don't know. And even if I could know what's going through his mind, it's still difficult to fully grasp his feelings. Oh, Paimon gets what you mean. Huh. Paimon had no idea it takes you so much effort to understand these kinds of things. <laughs> That's why I was a bit nervous just now. But luckily, seeing his happy face in the end reassured me that I didn't say anything wrong. Don't mind me, though. This is just my way of learning. Hey! Don't forget about Paimon! Everyone knows that Paimon's also super skilled at reading people's feelings. Thanks, you two. That makes me feel a lot better. Let's move on to the next question, shall we? I already asked the experts my question earlier, but I wanted to hear the Dendro Archon's response too. What should I do if I want to see my deceased wife in my dreams every night? Hmm, longing for the deceased. Even if you keep reliving those beautiful memories, it will only highlight the emptiness in your real life. If your wife were still alive, she certainly wouldn't want to see you like this, would she? No. I suppose not. But our time together in my dreams is not just reliving our past together. I don't know. Maybe it's because I miss her too much. But it's really as if she had come back to life in my dreams. She even remembers each and every dream. After I wake up and then continue dreaming again later, we can pick up our conversation right where we last left off. That's really amazing. Statistically speaking, continuous dreams are extremely rare. It's almost as if my wife has obtained a second life in my dreams. But the more vivid she appears, the emptier I feel, and the more painful it is when I wake up. I don't know whether to call it a blessing or a curse. Maybe all of this is rooted in your deep longing for her. Were there any unresolved matters or regrets between the two of you? I don't know. I suppose my biggest regret is that I couldn't spend the rest of my life with her. I really felt like I was ready to move on. I wouldn't be so hesitant now if it weren't for these hyper-realistic dreams I've been having. Huh. You know, they say that whatever's on your mind is what goes into your dreams. But dreams are, and will forever be, just dreams. We are people living in the real world. It's not good to be overly obsessed with dreams. All it'll do is fill up your mind and eat away at your thoughts. Yes, I know. That's why I'm also a little disappointed in myself. I still need to take care of our child. And it's probably not good to let her see me in such a state. <sighs> anyway... Thanks for your advice, Great Dendro Archon. Hmm, I'm a little worried about him. I hope he can find a way to cheer up soon. I think I can handle things from here. You'll need to stay here if you find it boring. You're here to have a good time after all. Are 
you feeling any better now? Yes. I think the Dendro Archon made a really good point. I need to stop dwelling on my wife like this and move on with my life. Now that I think about it, my wife and I always meet at a familiar place in my dreams. I know where that place exists in reality, but it's a bit far and dangerous. I don't dare to go there on my own. But at the same time, I feel as if I should go and have a look anyway. Perhaps I'll be able to move on once I see that there's nothing there. Otherwise, I'll keep on feeling like everything is covered in a haze, like I'm only half awake. Once I can stop dreaming about that place, I'll probably be able to get my life back together. Actually, you two are adventurers, right? If it's okay with you, could you escort me to that place? chance for us to unwind. Even if you can't see your wife there, taking in some nice scenery will definitely help cheer you up. Yeah, I hope so too. Alright, go ahead and get yourself ready then. interesting place without telling me again? Huh? Wait! Aren't you supposed to be answering questions? I just finished, and they really got a lot out of it. So many interesting and novel thoughts. Anyway, it looks like you're going somewhere. Why don't you take me with you? Oh, there's no need to trouble you, Great Dendro Archon. I imagine you must have many other important things to deal with. No need to stand on ceremony. Besides, I wouldn't have asked to come along if I didn't have a good reason. I wanted to use this opportunity to discuss with you some things that are puzzling me right now. Huh. I didn't know the great Dendro Archon could become puzzled too. <laughs> I'm not all that different from you, you know. Alright, let's go. We can talk on the way. Huh. Do adventurers often go to places like this? Huh. I guess so. So, this is where you always meet your wife in your dreams? Yes, for the most part. Our place is on the summit, just up ahead. When I saw her in my dreams, we didn't do anything but talk about ordinary, mundane topics. I'd tell her about our daughter, Hydar. And she always listened intently. She would also reminisce about the past with me, 
telling me interesting stories and cracking jokes. It feels like no matter how long we may chat, it's never enough. Sometimes, it's the little things in life that matter the most. This is the part I'm a little puzzled about. I am very familiar with dreams, and normally, they lack logic and continuity. But you said she could remember what you had told her before, right? That's right. She always listened to me carefully in real life, and now, she's doing the same in my dreams. She always surprises me with some details from our lives in the real world. The fact that she can remember such things makes me feel like she's alive. Whoa. That's pretty weird. Well, dreams are kind of weird to begin with. However, the problem is that his dreams have too much structure and continuity. Most dreams are far more fragile than you can imagine. For example, a loud noise outside your window in the real world could cause your dream self to get loaded into and fired out of a big cannon. Another example. If you're thirsty in the real world, then you might find yourself trudging through a desert in your dream. But the appearance of your wife seems unusually stable and unaffected by any outside interference. Statistically, this should be extremely rare. I don't understand it either. But I have no reason to suspect or reject these dreams. They're too beautiful. But I still want to figure out the how and the why. These kind of dreams are novel to me as well. That's why I want to have a look at the scene your dreams have been taking place at. Let's go. Just think of it as a nice little hike to the top of the mountain. Time to go. Well, he really wasn't kidding. This place definitely isn't safe. No matter. We'll just finish them quickly. Huh? Are you going to fight too, Nahida? Of course. This is all part of our little trip. Stabilize. Hey. Into the wind. There is no escape. about this place. I do not plan to deny the power of longing. Such an intense but unquantifiable emotion could indeed have the power to organize dreams. His wife must be a really amazing person. Huh? Wait, where'd he go? Oh, so you are waiting for me here? Well, guess what? 
I have brought someone amazing with me today. When the Dendro Archon said she wanted to come with me, I could hardly believe it. I'll bring Hydar once I'm more familiar with the way here. She's been telling me that she really misses you. Huh? What's wrong with him? There's nobody there! <sighs> Wait, Minar. Don't go that way. It's dangerous. Uh-oh, he's gonna fall! Catch him! <sighs> Luckily he didn't fall. But what was all that rambling about? He also looks like he's passed out. He's in the dream now. What he said just now matches almost perfectly with the dreams he's described to us earlier. Oh, so he fell asleep and started to have the same dream? I find it a little strange as well, but we mustn't awaken someone while they're sleepwalking. All we can do is sit here and wait. Uh, uh, huh? Minar. Where's Minar? Oh, good! You're finally awake! Uh, what happened? Huh? Sleepwalking? Oh, right. It was all just a dream. The moment I reached the summit, I saw my wife, Minar, sitting there and walked over to her. After I introduced her to you, she seemed a little flustered and started walking away. I told her to stop because of the cliff, and then she seemed to suddenly disappear. A strong wind started to blow around me and the sky grew dark. When I realized something wasn't right, I woke up. That sounds pretty wild. Maybe you were just too tired. I don't think so. I slept a lot yesterday, and I don't feel very sleepy now. Maybe we've affected the way his subconscious constructs dreams by following him here. Anyway, all that matters is that you woke up safe and sound. I think I know what happened now. I'm sorry. If it weren't for you, I would have fallen. Let's head back now. Don't come back to this place again for the time being. Oh, okay. Nahida, what's on your mind? Paimon's a little worried now. We still don't have enough evidence to work off of, so it's hard to draw any reliable conclusions yet. But I'm concerned that Ilmon's case may not be unique to him. Oh, right! Come to think of it, there were lots of people from the event who had vivid memories of their dreams. Right. And not only at a moment of dreams, there may be people like this all across Sumeru. We need to understand what's happening and the rate of its development as soon as possible. Then there's no time to lose! Let's head back! Stop standing there, Ilman! Let's go! You're back already! How'd it go? We have an emergency on our hands. Please notify everyone here that while they can continue to discuss their dreams, they mustn't try to visit or recreate the locations and scenes that they have been experiencing in them. What? Uh, uh, Alright, if that's the wish of the great Dendro Archon. But could you at least tell me what happened? You all look so serious. I see. 
I never knew even a dream could be so dangerous. Don't worry. I'll be sure to notify all the event participants and inform the other staff members about what has happened. Using the event registration list, I should be able to contact more people that were interested in dreams and warn them about the situation. Thank you. That would be very helpful. Let me confirm if all of today's participants are still here. Atta has already left. It seemed that he was on his way to make a hammer, so that shouldn't be a problem. Oh, wait a second. Where's Katya? Has anyone seen Katya? Has she already left? Oh, I, I think she already left. She said there was somewhere she wanted to go. Oh no. Did she want to look for the place from her dreams too? Can you tell us where she went? Yes, she did briefly mention it. Somewhere near... Chatrakam Cave. Alright, thank you. We'll go look for her. Please help us tell the others not to do anything reckless. Sure thing. Oh, who would have known things would have turned out like this?